Okay, let's start the class. It's late. Okay. We didn't learn for a while. We're going to start. We started already. We're going to start on page 54. Um, Pasik Hay. Okay, two lines or so. Three, two, two and one word lines from the end of the page. Page 54. By, uh, Pasik Hay. Okay, the story until now, these are middle of the 10 tests of Avram Avinu. We discussed at great length the last time we learned about Avram Avinu, the various different Foshim. So anyway, Hashem says to Avram, go. He doesn't tell him where to go, he just goes, right? The last thing we learned was that Avram, it says here, was 75 when he left Chodan. The problem is, later on in the Pasha, it speaks about the Brisbane Absodim, that Hashem made the covenant with Avram when he cut the, the lamb in half. So over there, he was 70 years old. And here the Torah says he's 75. So we discussed last time, the Farshan say there's no chronological order in Torah. And many people say that happened before this exodus. And therefore this exodus, when Avram was 75, happened after the, the Brisbane Absalom. Okay? So it says like this. Avram, Avram took a Sarai Ishtai, now, the Mephoshim explain, uh, Rashi says, other well, Mephoshim explain, the, what do you mean he took? How did he take her? He didn't tie her up with a rope uh, and take her. So it says, he took her with words. <laughs> Taking, it doesn't only mean physically, but as the Mephoshim say, that he actually took her by, you know, speaking uh, nicely to her. Uh, he took Sarai Ishtai, that's Leid ben Achiv, and uh, Leit his nephew. That's, and this, by the way, as we learned, he's also his brother in law. Leit and Sarai were brother and sister. But the Torah never mentions that clearly. The Torah mentions it hinting before, at the end of Noach. But the Torah, the Torah never calls Leit Avram's brother in law. What? Why? He says, I don't know. Yadashim Achim Anachmi says we're brothers, but that doesn't mean, uh, you know, brothers meaning brothers, like all Jews are brothers. brothers. And all the properties that they had, meaning like this, this is another greatness of Avram Avinu. Avram Avinu didn't know where he was going. Hashem said go. So normally what do you do when you want to scout out a new place? You take a few of your belongings that you need for the journey. You leave everything at home. And then when you finally settle down, that's when you get all the stuff, right? That's when you call the moving company and move all the things. Avram Avinu had such trust in Hashem, he took everything he had. It's called everything that he had, whatever he owned, he took with him. Hashem said, go. He just went and took it. Asher asked the Bechadim that he made in Chodan. Okay. That's called a nefesh. Asher asked the Bechadim. Sorry. All the souls that he made in Chodan. Now, what does souls literally mean? Simply, souls can mean his servants, his slaves. But the reality is, the Rashi quotes, but the Medrash quotes even more, all the Gadim, all the converts that he, Avram Avinu made that he took all the gatim that he took from the... In fact, in the Zerah says all the converts, but in Seva Yoshi, to bring down over here, was actually 72 people. How many converts did Avram Avinu make? 72. Where's the number 72? I don't know, but this one says, it's a major Seva Yoshi. That's where Avram Avinu took 72 people. These were, it's rich one? But, no, no. These are people that he brought Tachas Kamfei Hashchina under to believe in one God. Before the Torah was given, being Jewish, so to speak, meant believing in God. That's it. That's it. And in fact, it's explained in Medrashim and Mephoshim and other places also, that nothing remained from these people. We don't find any descendants of them. And in fact, the Mephoshim say that after Avraham and Sarah died, there was nothing left of these people. They didn't remain... You know, they were encouraged by Avram and Sarah. Avram and Sarah died eventually, so they weren't uh, part of the Jewish community anymore. But this is what he took. 
He took all the all the gate and all the camera people that he took, and he said like this: uh, They were going to the land of Canaan. Now, why were they you doing going to Canaan? That's interesting. See. Huh? Hashem didn't tell him where to go. Said, yeah. So Mfashim say because Hashem already promised him that don't forget this happened after Brisbane upset him. Hashem told Avram Avinu there in Brisbane Absalom at the end of Lechucha that I'm going to give you the land. The land, this land is going to be yours. Vaknani Osbard is it's going to send. So at logical, Avram Avinu said, like, I don't know where I'm going. Hashem said, Go. He didn't tell me where to go, so I have to use my brain to figure out where to go. So Hashem told him where to go. So he didn't tell him where to go, so he said, I'm going to go to Canaan because this is the land that Hashem promised me that I'm going to get. Find out? I will find out. Hashem told him before that he's going to be getting it. They don't say about Canaan. It doesn't say anything about the Canaan. It says, by Bispin Absalom, Hashem said, I'm giving you the land of Canaan. That's where he's soon going to say, Canaani Osbad. It's one time we'll see there. Okay? Now, um, or as other Mephashim say, where did, before Avraham Avinu went to Choron, where was he in Ur Kastim, which was part of Canaan? So logically, Avraham went from Canaan to Choron. So now Hashem says, get out of here, go. Lech Lecha. So logically, he was going back to the land of Canaan. This is what the Mephashim would say. But Yavari Arts of Canaan, he came straight to the land of Canaan. Meaning, Terach started also going with Avram Avinu. It says, Vayetz ita mir kazdim, lolach is arts of Canaan, before, at the end of Noach. It says, Vayikach Terach, Terach took Avram and Light, um, and they went from Ur Kazdim to go to the land of Canaan, Vayavoy at Choron. Terach didn't also? continue. Yeah, but they, it says before. They went to, to the land of Canaan on page 52. Yeah, what does it say there? Terech took Avram his son, Light his grandson, Sari his daughter-in-law, and they let, went from Ur Kastim to go to the land of Canaan. Where did they end up? In Choron. And they settled there. Mm. So Terech went with them, the Chathilo, when they were going out, but Terach ended up in Choron. That's where he parked and stayed there, and he died in Choron. Avram Avinu kept going to the land of Canaan. Okay, and he came to the land of Canaan, that unlike Terach that stopped, he went straight to the land of Canaan. Okay, so now the Pasuk says like this. The Yavid Avram Ba'oretz, Avram went, passed through the land. Now, Simply, Vayavir Avram Ba'aretz means he passed through the whole land. That's the simple meaning of the word. Vayavir Avram Ba'aretz, he went through the land. Now, the simple meaning, but Pashas, it doesn't mean he came to Canaan, because it should said, Vayavir um, to Canaan, he came to Canaan, stop. Right? The Pashas continues, no, he went through the whole land. And we'll soon see why Avram Avinu Taka went through the land. It was a form of acquisition. Or going walking around the land, it's one of the acquisitions. If I want to sell you land, and one of the ways you acquire it it's is it's to it's walk it's around the land. It's, it's also called chazaka. It's like an established form that you actually uh, acquire the land that way. Survey. Survey. <laughs> but it was more than a survey. It was actually a form of acquisition. He went place to place. Why did he go from place to place? He was waiting for Hashem to tell him what to do. You come to a place and Hashem doesn't tell you anything. So obviously that's not the place. So he went to the next place, the next place, the next place. And he ended up going around the whole land of Canaan. And again, why did Hashem do it? Because Hashem wanted him to be kind of the whole, the whole land of Canaan. But that's why he said, where did he go? Adma came Shechem, until the city of Shechem. Ad Elaine Meira until the place of Elaine Meira, Vaknani Ozba Oris, but the Knani was in the land. Okay? Now, what did it mean Mikhaim Shechem? Um, Shechem, that really Shechem didn't exist yet. 
Remember the story with Shem with Dina? Mm-hmm. Shem, right, Dina, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. That's, therefore, Hamor, who is Shem's father, called it Shem for his son. Mm-hmm. They, they, they weren't alive yet. They were in Yaakov mm-hmm. Vino's time, right? Mm-hmm. So why does the Torah call Shem? But we find it interesting, many places, the Torah calls a city based on what happened later on. The city didn't have that name yet, yeah, but because eventually it's called mm. Shechem, so even now the Torah calls it Shechem already. And then he came to Shechem, Ad Elein Meire, until Elein Meire. Okay, now, um, now the, the, the Chizkuni says an interesting thing. It says, Mekoim Shechem, the place of Shechem. Mm. It should have said, Ir Shechem. City of Shechem. <laughs> came to the city of Shechem. This proves the point, by the way. Some of the Chizkuni wants to say it wasn't the city yet. It was like a, something. Whatever, a little shtetl. It wasn't the city yet. But based on what we just said, it makes even more sense. Ad Mekayim Shechem, the place that will eventually be Shechem. So it couldn't say Ir Shechem because it wasn't a city yet. Mekayim Shechem means the place that eventually is going to become Shechem. Okay? Now, why did, Yaak, why did Avram Avinu go to Shechem? So Rashi says, because he wanted to daven for Yaakov Avinu later with Shechem. The whole story with Dina and Shechem and that whole story. So Avram Avinu already went beforehand to daven for, what, for Yaakov Avinu that he should be safe, safe in Shechem. <coughs> okay, now, well, there's an interesting, there's a famous Ramban. Ramban says, my of is similar to Whatever happened to the Ovis was a sign of what was going to happen for the shake. children. Okay? Now, why does it say all these things? The Torah speaks about Avram Avinu traveling and digging wells <laughs> and playing with covered sticks, even though Lachayra, they're not that important. So he says, we find in many times later on in Tanakh, with Yirmiya, things that were relevant based on what the Ovis did. Meaning like this, besides that he prayed for Shechem, but in the case Shechem would be the first place to be conquered by the sons of Yaakov Avinu, conquered Shechem. What, what was the first place he fought and conquered? When they killed out all the people from Shechem, Shechem, right? So that was the first place he conquered. So therefore, Avram Avinu went to Davin there. Uh, even though in the Torah says, Vakanani Oz Ba'aretz, why? Because he was still in the... Kenani the Kenani was, it wasn't given to Avram Avinu yet. Now, so nevertheless, he <coughs> davened for what was going to be. Um, okay, next. Um, Did Avram knew that what's going to happen? Avram knew what was going to happen. They were in the VM. They knew what was going to happen. Did they know exactly what was going to happen? How it happened? Mm-hmm. Not necessarily. But they knew something was going to happen, and therefore they davened for them. The Yaakov didn't know something was going to happen, or that event he didn't know. Listen, just because somebody is a navi doesn't mean he knows everything. Listen. Something they know. What did the the positive letter say? Hashem held me many. Hashem hid it from me. I didn't know. Right with Alicia over there, Hashem Halim Bimana, they didn't know. Nevi'im have to know what they supposed to. I'm not with it. Hashem tells a Navi what he needs to know. Mm-hmm. Yaakov Avinu didn't know. If he was a Navi, he would have known what happened to Yosef and other, right? He didn't. Because Nevi'im doesn't mean they know everything. They know what Hashem wants them to know because they need to know it at that time. But otherwise, it's not uh, necessarily uh, this. Also, this whole union of convert, uh, the Avram Avinu converting people, so to speak, to, to Yiddishkeit. So there's an interesting thing about this. It says like this. Now, Vedizad, the Gemara says, how old was Avram Avinu when he started believing in God? It says different ages. Three, right? There's this Eikav, Ashisham, Avram Bakeli, 172 Avram at the age of three. The Ramam has says 40. Another place says 48. The Gemara of Edezar says 52. Now they make a husband. Avram Avinu 
was born in the year 1948 after creation. In Hebrew, 1948. If he was 52 when he started spreading Yiddishkeit, that was in the year 2000. 48 and 52 is 2000, right? 1948 and 52. That's what the Gemara says. The first 2,000 years were Tehu. Second, the second thousand years, the Gemara says, is the, 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 the Teda. 2,000 years of Teda. And then the last 2,000 years is Shnei Allah um, from Mashiach. But the Gemara says, the first 2,000 years of creation were Tehu. It was emptiness. There was no Teda, there was nothing yet. The second 2,000 years began the concept of Teda. And the last 2,000 years of the level of the concept of Yemesa Mashiach. So when did Avraham Avinu begin at 52? Because that was the, exactly the year 2000 which began the era of Matan Teda. So all this has to do with Avraham Avinu's, you know, spreading Yiddishkeit and Matan Teda and started doing mitzvahs and, and all that that affected everybody. Okay. One thing here. Didn't know that we didn't get to. Okay. Next. Um, Vayera, oh, so now he finally comes to Shechem. Vayera Hashem al Avram. Now Hashem appeared to Avram and he said, Lazaracha eti nesar esazis. I'm giving you this land to your children. Okay? Meaning, not you. Hashem said, I'm not giving you the land yet. I'm giving it to your descendants. Lazaracha. That means you can live wherever you want. Lazaracha eti nesar esazis. Okay, they're going to get the whole land, and they're going to be spread out all the, all over the place. But even Shem is Beach, La Hashem Anira Elav. He built there a Mizbeach. So Rashi says, why did he build a Mizbeach? An altar to thank Hashem for what Hashem did. So Mizbeach was an act of thanking Hashem that he was going to get the land, and therefore the Ramban explains. Therefore, he wasn't afraid. You have to say he's amongst idol worshippers. He's going to build a mizbeach to God. They're going to kill him. Right? They, they, they didn't tolerate the believers. He wasn't afraid anyway. So therefore, and, and, and other Mephoshim say even more, the fact that Hashem appeared to Avram there shows it was a holy place. If it was a holy place, then it was fit to make a mizbeach, to, to thank Hashem. But you're going to see another interesting thing. Avram Avinu, in the next two psukim, built two more Mizbechais. He made three Mizbechais, three Mizbeachs, as I would say in English. Avram Avinu built three. The first one, right here, for what? Thanking Hashem for what he did. Vayatik Misham Ha'ara, and he moved from there towards the mountain. Mikadam uh, Lebeis El, east of Beth, Beth, Bethel, as it's called. Vayat Ahalai, he pitched his tent. Beis El Meyam, Beis El was on the west. Ha'ai Mikedem, I was on the east. Vayivin Shem Mizbeach Hashem, and again he built another Mizbeach. He built one in Shechem, right? Then he left Shechem, went to the mountain. Then he went to Beis El, and he built a second Mizbeach. Vayikra B'Shem Hashem. Okay. okay. Then. One second. Later on, yeah. in Parakut Gimel, it says again he built the, 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 another uh, uh, Mizbeach. Okay, the first one, first one he built to thank Hashem. Why did he build this one? We even show Mizbeach Hashem. So the Mephoshim explained why did he build it? He said, the Jews are going to be punished in the in later on in history, hundreds of years, thousands of years, no, a thousand years later, less. The Jews are going to be uh, banned, in, banned from the land, so Avraham Avinu davened for them. Second Mizbeach was to daven. What were they going to be banned for? That's because they sinned, Rashi says, because they, uh, with the Avin Achan, it was the sin of Achan that later the terrible sins happened in the Jewish people in the history. <laughs> so Avraham Avinu davened for them. And the third Mizbeach was um, 
just for for Corbanus. Thanking Hashem. Yeah, uh, uh, his son also saw how the Mizbeah that naked. The so they say these three Mizbeah is bound to three Botim Mikdashes, correspond with the three others. They even Foshim say that these uh, Mizbeah actually. Uh, but here's an interesting thing. This is all the men should listen to if you're married. It says, He pitched his tent. Yeah? But Ahalai should have a vav at the end. Ahala is with a hay at the end, which means her tent. You're gonna like this one. Mm. You're gonna you're gonna like this one. So Rashi says, "What do you mean by Ahala? First, he pitched. This is what the Medrash says. Avram Avinu first put up Sarah's tent. Mm. Then he built his own tent. Mm. He took care of his wife first." Good husband, huh? Yeah, that's where he's supposed to be, huh? Okay. You see, call him Abraham. The Radak says, no, even in Hebrew, Allah could be spelled with a hey at the end because in Hebrew, hey and vav are interchangeable. He actually, okay. Um, uh, also said, of course, towards, he was always going towards you to Shalim whenever, whenever he went anywhere. Abraham Avinu was going towards you to Shalayim. What is Shechem now? Shechem is where Yes is buried. No, the Arabs, you know, every so often they let you in for Yes, it's your yard site. Shechem is where Yosef is buried. Cave of Yosef. It's in Arab territory today. You can't get, it's very dangerous to go. No, but, but there, there's certain. What's unique about Eretz Yisrael when you go to Eretz Yisrael, you go to Chevron, you go to this, mm-hmm. you go see from uh, where Avram Avinu was with the Malachim, mm-hmm. yeah, and then you you see the road that he went down to Mar- to Mars and Machbela, mm-hmm. yeah. When Avram Avinu was chasing the calf, you know, when he went to Shech the calf mm-hmm. by Akedus Yitzchak, mm-hmm. oh no, by the three Manag, mm-hmm. by the Malachim, mm-hmm. right, and. Uh, so it says he ran a la kever. Bokar and kever, same because he ran to Marza Machpel. One of the sheep ran away to Marza. How did Avram Avinu know? We learned already this. How did Avram Avinu know Marza Machpel was a holy place? How did he know Adam and Chava were buried there? You know, he never saw Adam and Isha. He was 20 generations away from Adam and Isha. How did Avram Avinu know Marza Machpel's greatness? So it says, when the three Malachim came, the calf ran down the road towards Mars and Machpelah. Mm-hmm. It went into Mars and Machpelah. Avram Avinu chased it. And all the yeah. got up and said, Hi, how are you? Something like that. So he knew that that was a place of, of greatness, yeah? So you go on there, so you see that road coming down. You see, wow, Avram Avinu was on this road. <laughs> you know, you go to Shechem, you see, wow, Yosef Atadik was there. This is 5,000 years of history. That you see in in Eretz Yisrael, so all these places, Yerushalayim. I mean, uh, you know, all these places, Chevron and Yerushalayim. <coughs> this is all thousands of years of history. Okay, so this mizbeach he built to David for the future children. Vayikra b'shem Hashem, and he called in the name of Hashem, and not here, but in other places, says, "Don't read it." Vayikra. Vayikra means he called. Read it, Vayakri. He made others call. Avram Avinu not only called in the name of Hashem, but Vayakri, he made other people call. He brought, that was the difference between Noach and Avram. Noach was only for himself. Noach didn't go out to the generation to make him better. And Avram Avinu did it. Okay, um, and therefore, by the way, Avram Avinu in this journey is going toward you to Shalayim. Which again is the pattern of the Jews, eventually going into Israel, going into the Shlayim, uh, you know, build a base of Migdosh. Okay. But Yisa Avram, Avram traveled. He kept going southward. 
And the, but the measure said sometimes he stayed a month in one place, sometimes more, sometimes less. He just kept moving around where? Towards Yerushalayim. He went toward Yerushalayim, toward Harabayis, where the ultimate future of the Jewish people were going to be. Okay, um, he did it to, to in Chedek of Yehuda. Um, okay, next test of Avram Avinu. There was a hunger in the land. Hashem comes, finally, Avram Avinu comes to the country that Hashem tells him to go to. That's Israel, Canaan. And all of a sudden, there's a hunger. So again, Avram Avinu could have said, God, what do you, there's another test of Avram Avinu. So what are you doing? He sent me to a land, and right away I come to the land, there's a hunger. I mean, come on, make up your mind. What are you doing here? He didn't question. And by the way, it's interesting. Some of us learn that Avram wasn't right by going down to Mitzrayim. He wasn't, he wasn't 100% that he, that he should... Okay, let's see what it says. Be'ira Baritz. There was a hunger in the land. As soon as he settled in Canaan, Hashem made another test. Be'yered Avram Mitzrayim Logosham. Avram Avinu went down to Mitzrayim to live there temporarily. Ki chaved arav Baritz because the hunger was very severe in the land. Meaning, well, what is the Pasuk saying? Avram, this is for Avram's benefit. If there would have been any other reason that he would have been able to stay in Eretz Yisrael, he wouldn't have gone out. The Pasuk says, you want know why? Ki chaved arab. It wasn't time of hunger. It was literally nothing to eat. And if there was nothing to eat, yeah, I had no choice but to go down to Mitzrayim. Now, um, why is Mitzrayim called Vayeled? Not only physically, but spiritually. Avram went down to Mitzrayim. What happened? The story with Sada started up. Party started mm-hmm. up with Sada. Okay. So this is a descent on the level of Avram Avinu. But even when he went to Mitzrayim, the Pasuk says, Logosham, to live there temporarily. Okay? Meaning he didn't plan to stay there. He was forced to go because of the hunger, but he understood that I'm not going to Mitzrayim to live there. He had to go temporarily to Mitzrayim. Why? Why did Avram Avinu have to go to, to, to Mitzrayim? Because eventually his children had to go down to Mitzrayim. Where did that Koyach come from for the Jews to go down to Mitzrayim? Whatever happened to the Jews happened to the others. So Avram Avinu had to go down to Mitzrayim also. Okay. So, um, okay. So Avram went down because why? Why is why was Mitzrayim no hunger? Because Mitzrayim is not relied on by rain. Need. It's the Nile, the Nilus, the Nile River came up and irrigated the land, so they didn't need rain. So there was the no, there was no hunger in Mitzrayim. They were able to go. Okay. Another interpretation, by the way, is Vayeded Avram Mitzrayim, there was a descent in Avram himself. As we'll soon see in the story, it wasn't, um, you know, is there a sin in Avram? Okay, it's coming up the story of Avram saying she's a sister. Yeah. Is that wrong on his part? Is it right? There's a lot we'll discuss. There's a lot in the commentaries discussing was he right by saying she's my sister? Because he put her into danger. Okay, let's see what the Pasi says. Vayikashet, he could have loved him at when they started coming close to Egypt, meaning until then, they didn't have to worry about it, like it says. They didn't have to worry about anything else. So, Vayemel Sarai Ishta, he said to Sarai, his wife, the following. He nei no yodaiti, behold, I know, or in the English here it says, I have known. But some of us should say, now I realize that you're beautiful. Ki'isha yifas mara us, that you're a very beautiful woman. Okay, now the Medrash says, he, he was such a holy tzaddik, 
he didn't realize, and her modesty, he didn't realize her physical beauty. Until he went down to Mitzrayim, okay, so it says in the measures like this, they went over water and saw his reflection of her face came up in the water and he saw the beauty that she had. Or well, she became exposed, he saw her beauty, whatever it is. But because Avram, or, or like Rashi says, another interpretation. The simple meaning is, this is the Medrash says, that Avram Avinu was, she was so modest, and he was so holy, it wasn't, he didn't realize her physical beauty. The Rashi says in Pshat, what it means is, now I need to worry about your beauty. Until now, I didn't have to worry about your beauty. Nobody's going to kidnap you. Now, he didn't know you're dainty. Now I know that you're so beautiful. Now it's dangerous. Now I have to be concerned about your beauty. So what did he say? He didn't know you're dainty, I know. You're a very beautiful woman. Why? The Egyptians were very dark skin. So they weren't as beautiful, as, even though black is beautiful. But the uh, Ethiopians, that was their nationality at that time, they weren't accustomed to seeing a beautiful woman. So what happened? The Mitzrim are going to see you, and they're going to say, you're his wife. So what are they going to do? They're going to kill me and take you for a wife. So therefore, he ends us into this. This is very interesting. This husband that first made his wife's tent, <laughs> Such a good husband. No, he's a, well, yeah, see, yeah, it's not so good over here. <laughs> he says, please tell me you're my sister. Why? Listen to this. That I should get good. And I'm going to be able to live and account to you. Okay? So what did Abraham Avinu say? If you tell me that you're my wife, they're going to kill me. And then you'll be a widow. And then they can marry you. But they don't want to commit adultery. They know Allah. Huh? They know Allah. Well, no, no, you can't kill either. <laughs> but it sounds pretty ridiculous that Avram Avin is telling his wife, okay, you know what? They can rape you, they can do whatever they want to you, as long as I'll be okay. They'll give me gifts because I'm the brother, they'll give me a lot of gifts, and they won't kill me. So therefore, who cares about you? You say you're my sister. And then, I'll have a great life. Now, why wouldn't they just kidnap her and take her against her will to, to, to party? So the answer is because then they'd be committing adultery. Correct? But the question is, murder is also one of the seven Mrs. Meninech. So what happens over here? Yaakov Amavina says, they're going to kill me. And they're going to let you live. And they're going to commit adultery. Otherwise, they're going to commit adultery with you. So, it, both sins are Boy, equal. Shevet right. is Meninech. It's interesting. Some of us should learn that murder is one-time deal. They murder him. And then she's permissible for everybody forever. Like this, if she's still married, every time they're with her, they're committing adultery. So now the question is like this. One-time murder versus a lot of adulteries. Right? Now, of the two, even though the Torah says adultery is like murder, but realistically speaking, what's worse? Murder is worse than adultery. Just illogically, mur- murder is worse than adultery. The mom has killed the person. So now, Avram Avinu said like this, there were scholars, the Egyptians. They have a choice of doing one of two sins. <laughs> one big sin, murder, or a lot of little sins of adultery, which relative to murder is, is smaller. So which one would they do? They would do the lesser of the evils. So they would rather do one big sin rather than a lot of little sins because a big sin is not as bad as a lot of little sins. 
There was a lot of little, there's a lot of adulteries. Every time they're with her, it would be an adultery versus one big time murder. So this is what they decided they're going to do. Because otherwise the question is, murder is also forbidden. Why are they going to murder him? Adultery is forbidden, murder is forbidden. Why did Abraham Avinu say, you know what they're going to do? They're going to murder me uh, 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 instead of committing adultery with you. Let them commit adultery, not murder him. Maybe they can how, how come he care about the Egyptian, the murder or the adultery? How come Abraham care about them? Huh? Hmm. How come Abraham care about them? Why did he, he, he didn't want his kill. wife to get? He didn't no, want to get killed. No, they kill. They kill Abraham. They make a scene. The Abraham they doesn't make a scene. Why you care about the Egyptian? They make a scene, Abraham. Abraham didn't. He just made me make a calculation. Abraham Avinu made a calculation. For them, they do for them, not for himself. Again, Abraham Avinu. This is what the Mufashim say. Abraham Avinu made a cheshbon. So. That what how, he started thinking like an Egyptian. Yeah. Okay? The Egyptians are going to rationalize. It's better to kill him once, and then though they won't be sinning anymore. Of adultery. That's what Avraham Avinu made a husband. Even though killing is also so forbidden, but Avraham Avinu understood. Okay? But, but and he says, not in the it's interesting. Later on in Parsha Shmais, when it says, Pari made Exeda, yeah. So he said, all, what a power decree. It's an interesting thing. Pari said, throw all the boys into the Nile. And then he says, And the girls let live. Obviously, if he says kill the boys, then it's obvious the girls are not going to get killed. It's obvious. He says, kill the boys. Yeah. That means the girls are not going to get killed. Mm-hmm. Why does the Torah say, Chol Abbas mm-hmm. That was another decree. Techayun means, you Egyptians make them live. Meaning, you make them live like Shiksis. Mm-hmm. You make them live like Goyim. Mm-hmm. The power of decree wasn't that, okay, kill the boys and the girls are going to be mm-hmm. saved. No. Mm-hmm. The boys are going to have the physical death. And the girls, he said, v'chol abbas, tichayun, you mean you should make them live. It doesn't say passive that they will live. Tichayun means you will make them live like Yitzhikses, which is a spiritual death. That's what he says also. V'har go eisi, v'aysach yichayu. You, they're going to make live like an Egyptian. Which is also a terrible decree. The same thing like it is. So therefore, what does he say? Please say you're my sister. Now, how can Avraham Avinu lie? How can Avraham Avinu lie? He doesn't trust Hashem. No. <laughs> so the answer is he didn't lie. Why? Sada, Sarai, was his brother's daughter. Okay? And Rashi says this. That what? A man calls his, kids, his niece is my sister. Sister figuratively. She's my sister, my brother's daughter is my sister. You know, people even speak like that. My brother's daughter is my sister. So therefore, he, he didn't lie. But by the way, Imri Noam, Avram Avinu is not only speaking to him, okay? He said, everybody that went, light, everybody who was, that went with Avram, he said, whoever you guys are, whoever asks you what she is, Sister. Imri, plural. Shame is my sister. Okay? Isn't that when your life is in danger, it's okay to lie? Yeah, but this is another f- funny thing. Okay, the, the obvious question, how did Avraham Avinu do this? I mean, come on. It's a little... Well, of course, Netflix would have a right to lie. When I told my line, how do you say, say you're my sister? <laughs> did I should get good and then... Uh, and she'll be so one the simple answer by the way is Avraham Avinu knew Sarah was such a holy lady nothing's going to happen to her and we find that can nothing happen to her yeah. Pari didn't do anything with her so Avraham Avinu was certain that nothing's going to happen um, my wife is still is better it doesn't do anything to them yeah but the simple um, another thing 
Why did Avram Avinu worry, worry about gifts? So they bring down over here. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Why was he worried about gifts? So the Zayir Taker says, what Rashi says, that through her merit, he would be able to get all this money to be able to use for good things. To elevate the sparks of Kedusha that's in the money. He wasn't rich now, no. No. In fact, Rashi says when he went back up from Canaan, uh, from Mitzrayim, back to Canaan, the Pasuk says he went the same way he went down. To pay all the debts that he had. Avraham Avinu, when he was, he was broke. When he, when he went down to Mitzrayim, he paid he a credit card. Now the bill came. He didn't have the money. So he went back to pay the bill. But right now, Avraham Avinu did not have money. Now, according to Rashi, Avram Avinu had such trust in Hashem that it would have been wrong. Okay, when you have to be trust in Hashem, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean you don't make a vessel. You have to make a vessel, right? You have trust in Hashem that everything's going to be good, mm -hmm. but you still need to make, to make a vessel. You can't. Lay down in bed and say, okay, God, take care of me. Yeah, God's going to help me for sure. You have to make a vessel. Uh, the vessel might be a tiny vessel, but you still got to make a vessel. Huh? Yes. You make a vessel, then you'll be talking. God will fill up the vessel more than the vessel can hold. <laughs> Avram Avinu is in Canaan. There's a hunger. Avram Avinu could have stayed in Canaan. said, Hashem's going to take care of me. But then he's not making a vessel for it. So he had to go down to Mitzrayim, okay? So because he went down to Mitzrayim, um, he had to save himself, but he was so sure that Avsara was, because of Saul's greatness, nothing's going to happen. He, had no, he, he, didn't, he didn't think any of Avram was going to be a problem. Um, yeah. When you say the Dech Decha, Give me a guarantee that you go there, I s save you. But you have the guarantee letters from the Hashem. How come they do that? What? When they say, Lech Lecha, they give a guarantee to Abraham. Hashem give a guarantee letters. Go. I what? protect you. So it doesn't no need to change and say lie or it is not right for nothing. Say, say my Hashem told go, he goes. So go go by go to Egyptian and say my wife. He didn't what should he do? He asked, what, what are you asking? Why he went to Egypt? Why you go to Egypt first of all? Second, why say lie to? Is my sister, not my wife. Because it's trust Hashem. He said, left the heart, I give guarantee letters. I give something for you. Save you to Avram Avinu was afraid. This is what the Mephoshim mm -hmm. say. Avram Avinu was afraid if Sarah was taken forcibly by Pari, mm -hmm. people would say, Look at this God, he doesn't even take care of his own people. Here's this guy, Avram, told him to leave, he leaves, he did everything. And look what happens. People are going to say, It's a Chil Hashem. People are going to say, Look what happened to Avram. You, you see how God takes care of him? God doesn't take care of him. Hashem, they don't let him happen. Huh? Hashem, they don't let it happen at that time. So he's by saying sister, then he wouldn't they wouldn't have to take her forcibly. And then he knew that in the merit of Sada she would be safe. And that's the way he did it. <coughs> Thank you. Okay, so he says like this. Please say you're my sister. Okay. Vahar goisi vaisa chichai and then I'm going to leave you alive, but as it is. 
Okay, now, um, the Ramban says that Bechal, Avram Avinu, wherever he went, you find this even later with Avimelech, he also said she's my sister. Yeah. And the Ramban says that from the time Avram Avinu left Choron, he always said she's my sister. That was the common practice of Avram Avinu to say she's my sister. Okay? Now, it also says um, they didn't even ask when they took her to powder. Babinel says they didn't even ask her, like, uh, what you are to him. Okay? When he finally found out, at the end of the story, right? When Pauli found out, he screamed at Avram Avinu, saying, Why didn't you tell me she's your sister? And why did, no, why did you lie to, to me? Yeah. Why did you tell me she's your sister? Yeah. That means they never even realized it. They just took at face value, she's a sister, and that's it. They never questioned anything. And therefore, Pauli really wasn't to blame. If you think about it, so I should punish him temporarily. But Pali wasn't to blame. Like, what did he do wrong? They say she's a sister. He was very beautiful. He said, okay, I want a wife. Yeah. Probably had a few anyway. Yeah. Oh, more than a few. Um... Okay, but Avram Avinu was certain by, first of all, by Pari giving gifts to Avram, Avram would have a status that people would be afraid to start up with him. This is all, and, and, and the Ramam says, interesting, in many different places, that uh, like Moshe Avinu was rich, a lot of Jewish mm-hmm. leaders are very wealthy. Why? Because when a person has money, people have the tendency of people to respect it and to listen to them. So Hashem made many of the tzaddikim very wealthy. They should should be able to have power, like Rabbi Yudan Nasi. He had a lot of power and influence with the Romans, with Antoninus, with others, because of his money. Huh? Yeah, the Remarash didn't have money, by the way. He lived rich. He didn't have money. But he behaved like that. He behaved like that. There are a few tzaddikim. The Russian there was like that. They lived very wealthy even though they didn't have any money. It was a, their Aved and Aved Hashem. Some of them had to live wealthy, to show wealth at least, even though there was no money. And other people... He built up a house when he's burnt, his house burned down. He said, I want the same place you... Make it three times bigger and uh, put so because many the, gates and so because when a fire what, burns what down, that was because that's a very simple thing. When you knock down a house, yeah, yeah. you want to do construction, so you knock down a house. You're gonna put up the same house. Much better. One second. You're gonna put up the same house. Yes or no? One <clears throat> minute. You're not gonna put up the same house. Why? If you put out the same house, why bother knocking it down? Correct? Just leave it. His house burned down. You're not listening to me. If you b- forget about that house burning down, you knock down the house, you're gonna build a new house. You're gonna build the same th- house or better? Better. Why? If you're not gonna build better, why knock it down? Correct? Okay. When the Rebbe Marash's house burnt, yes. said Hashem burnt it. So what's the purpose? To put up the same thing? Why did Hashem burn it down for? So what did Hashem want, obviously? He to put up a bigger house. That much didn't have money, by the way. Brought down, they didn't have money. They, they, certain Sadiqim just lived royalty. That was our way to Hashem. Some people live like that, some people not all live like that. So is my wife. But even then, by the way, we're going to finish in a few minutes. Even then, 
Avram Avinu still <laughs> hit her in a box. When they went into Mitzrayim, the next person is going to say, when Avram came down to Mitzrayim, where was Sarah? Right, he hit her in a box. So he opened for tax purposes. I'm sure he had air, <laughs> air holes in uh, they open for tax. In fact, the manager goes on to all He said, I don't, uh, whatever, okay, any, whatever you want, I'll pay tax. He offered to pay tax on whatever. They thought he had some um, counterband, whatever. So they got fishy. They, they got, uh, so they opened up the box. They still saw it was there. Yeah, he says, he, Rashi says in the matter. He locked her in a box. When he came to Custom's house, the office demanded Avram mm-hmm. pay the custom duties. Avram said, okay. You carry diamonds in the box? I'll pay duty on diamonds. You carry silks? Avram said, okay, I'll pay for silk. Uh, he said, uh, <laughs> who knows? You, when you're too willing to pay the taxes, that means something's wrong. So Avram Avinu figured out what it was. Okay. Okay.